Good evening, fellow Denisonians. How's everyone doing? How's the class of 2026 doing? We're going to have to run that back really quick. How is the class of 2026 doing? That's what I like to hear. Class of 2026, welcome home. My name is Alex Pan, and I am the student body president of Denison. On behalf of the student body, thank you so much for being here today. Students, parents, faculty, and staff. I'd like to share a story of mine, as your story here is about to begin. But before I start, I'd like to ask you to take a moment and close your eyes. Take five seconds, be present in this space, and make a promise, any promise. And I'll count to five. I think that's five seconds. <laughs> All right, now it's story time. As a kid, I loved talking. I raised my hand all the time in class until my elbows went sour and took every question as an opportunity to either find answers or tell a story. Being curious and driven is a good trait, but come to think of it, kid me was annoying. However annoying sometimes it may be, storytelling shapes our perception of the world. As life went on, I developed a hunger for learning attributed to my first job, 15 years old as a groundskeeper at Rutgers Houses in New York. It wasn't the job I wanted, but it was the job I got. Maybe some of you can relate. My days were either spent slurping blue slushies outside the Madison Street bodega or learning anything that my boss, Tim, was willing to teach me. I had an expiration date on my job, no ladder to climb, and saw how decisions made at the top trickled down on ordinary people my people. Granted, it was an internship, whether it be raking leaves in 95 degree heat or exploring dusty underground tunnels. That journey changed how I saw the world. Sweating puddles outside taught me that impeccable character and a growth mindset are just as important as being driven, if not more. I share this with you today because two years ago, I sat in your seats. As I sat there listening to induction, I made a promise to myself. If I worked hard enough, I'll make it to this stage too. If I worked hard enough, somebody that looked like me and moved like me could be a storyteller for future Denisonians. Two years later, a kid from New York with, you know, maybe some charisma is sharing this story with you today. Just as you complete one chapter of your life, another starts. This time is different. You have every opportunity to grow from both successes and failures. The doors to our hill are open for you to grow and climb as high as you can. You have the agency to share stories with incredible company, pursue your passions, and have Denison be a launching pad for your future. You have earned the gift of being a Denisonian, and in that is a gift of time time to make mistakes, time to be a scholarly explorer, and time to grow into who you're meant to be. I hope that you become people who are constantly giving back to our community, even when it's inconvenient. People who are courageously empathetic, and an individual that reminds us of everything that is right in the world. Today is the start of your story and I can't wait for you to share it. Thank you. I will now ask Greg Bader, Vice President for Institutional Advancement, to join me at the podium. Thank you, Alex. Good evening, everyone. My name is Greg Bader, and I'm Vice President for Institutional Advancement. To give you an idea, the Division of Institutional Advancement is charged with the responsibility to keep the alumni family connected to the college and provide opportunities that nurture lifelong engagement with their alma mater. On behalf 
of our 37,000 alumni, it is my deep privilege to welcome the class of 2026 to the Denison family. Denison alumni remain deeply committed to the college, and they generously give back to the institution in a variety of ways. They give of their time, their talent, and their treasure. In fact, each year, thousands of alumni provide counsel to students, access to internships, advice to student organizations, a warm welcome to a new city, and yes, philanthropic support so that this remains one of the finest colleges in the country. From scholarships to funding that supports academic programs and even a new student wellness center. Alumni and Denison families provide the philanthropic gifts that allow our college to flourish and for each of you to have the incredible educational experience that you are about to begin. Over the next four years, you will have opportunities to connect with alumni in a variety of ways, including through the Knowlton Center for Career Exploration. As you begin this journey, I encourage you, accept those invitations and proactively think even now about the ways you can utilize these connections and these relationships to build your network. That network will support you through your journey on this campus and well beyond the hill. These are opportunities and gifts that alumni will provide to you. And in return, they will expect you to offer the same commitment to the generations that will follow you. Supporting one another is what Denisonians do. It is simply the Denison way. It is a tradition to have two students serve as representatives of the entering class. We select these two students whose hometown is nearest to campus and the student whose hometown is farthest from Denison. I am pleased to introduce Zoe George, who is from Granville and lives approximately a half mile from campus. And Aaron Matthew, who is from Bogor, Indonesia, and has traveled 10,024 miles to arrive here in Granville. Can you please join me on the stage? This is the banner for the class of 2026. Behind you are the class banners for the students for who have preceded you over the past century. You will see your banner upon your graduation, and then you will see it again at each reunion, which takes place every five years after you graduate. Welcome to Denison. Now I am pleased to introduce you to the chair of the faculty, associate professor of politics and public affairs, Heather Poole, who will welcome you on behalf of the college. Hello. Well, first of all, welcome to Denison, class of 2026. 30 years ago, almost exactly to the day, I was attending my own convocation at a very small residential liberal arts college in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I vividly recall that day with its feelings of anticipation and excitement, but also a little anxiety and just a dash of abject fear. A few days later, I sat in classes with strangers who are now among my best friends. My first class literally blew my mind. I had no idea that math could be the subject of discussion and debate rather than rote memorization or mechanical problem solving. As we talked about the definitions that begin Euclid's elements, about 500 words that we discussed for about an hour and a half, I could feel the ground shifting underneath my feet. Things that had seemed solid dissolved not into air, but into an infinite series of questions rather than a finite set of answers. I left college with no clear sense of direction to my parents' great irritation, <laughs> but I left having learned how to learn. I also graduated having learned how to learn from and with others. A few years ago, I went back to college for, my, for a reunion, and we, consummate nerds that we are, have seminars during our reunion. And mine was on Elena Ferrante's My Brilliant Friend. And much like when I was a student, I finished it the night before. It was a lyrical, vivid portrait of complicated friendships in a community with intense connections and rivalries. I was glad that I read it, 
but I couldn't quite understand why so many people thought it was the great novel of the year. And then I went into a room with 20 other people to talk about it, and once again, my head exploded. <laughs> the book had layers of depth, brilliant call-outs to other great works in the Western tradition, universal themes overlaid with depth of context, and I, reading alone in my room, had gotten none of that. So this is why we learn best in community, in conversation. No one of us can see all the important bits on our own. It's when we come together to look at the same thing and each share what we see that collectively we can see more. Having had my own life-changing experience at a small liberal arts college, I want to share with you five things that I wish I'd understood better at the start of my college days. So there's five. First one, you're a learner, but you're also a teacher. Second, learning requires rest. Third, be brave. Four, fail well. And five, have patience. So first, you're here to be a learner and also a teacher. When most of us think of college, we think of classes, books, and professors. And I sincerely hope that all of those are important sites of life-changing learning for you. That's what we as professors want. We want the sheer awesomeness of what we're talking about to be mind-altering. So come see us in office hours. Please rescue me from playing stupid games on my phone. Come talk to us about the class, why you're at Denison, what you want to be when you grow up, how we grew up to be professors, random things we say, or books we recommend in class. Come talk with us. We want to talk to you. But you're also going to learn on athletic fields, in rehearsal spaces, from people in other co-curricular spaces, or from your roommates. I encourage you to see everyone you meet here as a potential teacher. That's why the residential part of a small liberal arts residential college is so important. You'll learn a lot about academic content in your classrooms, but you may well learn more about yourself outside those rooms. But don't forget that you're also a teacher here. You will teach your classmates, your teammates, your friends, and your professors. You will contribute to their growth and learning simply by being you and making meaningful, honest, and brave contributions to the conversations you're a part of. So to get the most out of your four years on the Hill, talk with faculty, talk with peers, talk with everybody you meet. Each of them can teach you something, and you might well teach them something too. <clears throat> Second, this is really important, learning requires rest. The hard work of learning happens best when you have time to think. Denisonians are doers. Y'all are busy. But we faculty worry that you do too much and don't leave yourself time to mull, reflect, pause, and experience wonder. When I'm deep in a writing project, I work best when I do between four and six hours of reading and writing. And the hours that I'm not working, I'm mulling over what I read. I'm putting the pieces of this together with that. I'm trying to puzzle through a knot in my thinking. And it's often when I'm taking a walk, making dinner, or sometimes waking from a deep sleep when I have a moment of absolute clarity. I found that those flashes of insight only happen, though, when I've stepped away and given myself the chance to see the forest rather than looking very, very closely at this tree. You are here to learn but you will learn better and more deeply if you create and protect time to recharge, rest, and reflect. By taking care of your body, by fully embracing wellness in all of its forms, you will also be taking care of your mind and heart. Third, be brave. In Ursula Le Guin's The Dispossessed, one of the characters says this, there's a point around age 20 when you have to choose whether to be like everybody else the rest of your life or to make a virtue of your peculiarities. Your job here is to think about, reflect on, and learn for yourself what success looks like for you. It may look different than you imagine right now. It may mean standing firm about choices that people around you find vexing or believe are wrong. But this is your life. You are the person who will live with the consequences of your choices. So make ones that accord with what you want your life to look like. Part of this is being honest about who you are and what you believe. But temper that honesty with a willingness to encounter and learn from others. Because, and this may come as a real shock, you might actually be wrong. 
While here at Denison and for the rest of your life, you will encounter ideas and people who will change your mind and how you approach the world. But that change can only happen if you are curious about yourself and open to it. Talk with, which requires, lis requires listening to, people who disagree with you about fundamental questions, such as politics, religion, human nature, or economic systems. The next four years of your life will be a total roller coaster, and spoiler alert, so will the rest of your life. <laughs> you will have moments of such happiness and connection and fullness of life that it feels like your heart might burst from the sheer joy of existence. You will also have moments where things seem impossible and terrible and useless. You may fall into and then out of love. You will definitely be disappointed in others. There will also be times when you will be disappointed in yourself. It will be hard. Learning is hard. Heck, much of life is hard. But be brave. Know your value. Take risks. What we as a faculty want for you is not for you to become like us, God forbid, or like your parents, shh, don't tell them, or like anyone else. We want you to become fully and happily you. Fourth, fail well. You might fail exams. You might even fail classes. You may not make the varsity team, get cast in the role you so desperately wanted, or gain the leadership positions you feel you deserve. We have all been taught that failure is very bad. But I encourage you to think of moments of failure as moments of clarity. And we need those moments of clarity. By the time I was 25, I joined and separated from the Air National Guard, tried and failed to be both straight and cisgendered, completed one year at a small liberal arts college, then left without transferring a single credit, started a job as a long haul trucker, then quit. All those things are fine things, but they were not fine things for me. At the time, each felt like a failure. In good faith, I'd committed to something that seemed right, then realized it wasn't. I had uh, realized that I was in places where I couldn't grow in ways I wanted to, or where I couldn't be fully me, so I changed course. And so when, not if, when, you experiencing, experience something that feels like failure, take the time to feel your feelings. Cry, rage, withdraw, whatever works. But then reflect on what became clear through that experience. Do you have a better sense of who you are, of what you want, of your strengths and weaknesses, your goals, your values? How might you better handle similar setbacks and obstacles in the future? If you do those things, then you failed well. And finally, have patience. You're gonna be working jobs for the rest of your life. Your job right now is to learn more about the world and yourself and to do so in ways not driven by how much you get paid or whether you are getting promoted, but by your own curiosity. Take advantage of the amazing resources Denison has to offer in terms of launching your post-college career. But think of your future as an opportunity to live your values and pursue making the world a better place, however you may define that. You are here to learn the answers to those questions, not just discover or prepare for a career. So to, con to conclude, when I sat in your place 30 years ago, I wish I'd better understood that I was a learner and a teacher, that I needed to rest well in order to learn deeply, that being brave is the real test in life, that learning from my failures would positively shape my life, and that having patience, being in the moment, is a good strategy for success. Each of you is gonna be a great Denisonian, and I hope these tips help even a tiny bit as you embark on your journey. The next four years are gonna be amazing. I, along with the rest of the faculty, can't wait to meet you. I'm already looking forward to celebrating you, now, celebrating you and how you've grown when we all gather again in May of 2026. Thank you. So now, Professor uh, Ching Chu Hu of uh, Denison's Department of Music has composed a very special piece of music um, to mark this occasion.
The fanfare for the class of 2026 will be performed tonight and then again upon the occasion of your commencement from Denison in May of 2026. <laughs> It is my pleasure to now introduce Denison University's 20th president, Dr. Adam Weinberg. Can you hear me okay in the back? Good, good. So you already learned your first lesson about Denison. Make sure you take at least one class with Dr. Poole. There are 685 of you. I think she can fit you all into one of her classes this semester. Um, can, we, can we give Alex a round of applause? He was a shy introvert when he came to Denison. And two years later, we helped him find his confidence. Um, before I get off my remarks, I want to, I want to just do a, a couple things. Can I get the um, great class of 2026, all 685 of you, you will be by far the largest class in Denison history, to stand up and just face the families in the audience? Can we just give all of the parents, grandparents, and everybody who made today possible for you a round of applause? And just keep standing for a second. Can I get the parents and all the family members to stand up as well? Can we give our faculty a round of applause? There's not a faculty in the country that's more talented or cares more about students than this faculty, and never has that been on display more than the last two years. And I just, I wanna say in front of the entire community here, I just feel honored and privileged to work with them. Um, thank you. Can we give our staff a round of applause as well? All right, everybody can sit, thank you. I partially did that because I often will speak for too long and now you're actually awake again. Um, I, I do want to welcome you. I want to welcome our, the class of 2026. I want to welcome you to Granville. I want to welcome you to Denison. Um, and most importantly, I want to welcome you to college. And, and I want to repeat what I said a minute ago. I also want to thank all the families who have worked hard and sacrificed um, so that these incredible college students can receive a life-shaping Denison education. I want to start with both an observation and a hope. Here's the observation. Your high school years were many things, but they were not normal. You are a generation, you are a class whose high school years were uniquely defined by COVID and by COVID restrictions. Depending on where you lived and where you went to high school, 
you had a wide range of junior and senior high school years. But you all have one thing in common. It wasn't typical. It wasn't really what you wanted. And it was restricted in all kinds of ways. So here's my hope. I want your college years, the next four years, to be defined by the freedoms of a fully residential liberal arts college. What do I mean by that? No, oh, you can clap for that. So what do I mean by that? Um, and I'm going to apologize up front. A number of pre-orientation students heard a shorter version of this on Saturday or Sunday. Um, you're going to get to hear it again in all of its glory. But my mind hasn't changed a whole lot over the last three years. So this still remains my advice. So my hope for you is that you will graduate in four years. Notice I didn't say five or six. In four years with three attributes that I believe define a life transforming liberal arts education. And they're as follows. The first is intellectual rigor. The ability to form ideas based on fact, reason, rationality, and the ability to discern fact from fiction. The second, intellectual creativity and critical thinking. The ability to see problems in new ways, to connect ideas into new ways of seeing the world, to be the critical thinkers and creative problem solvers the world needs, to find opportunities where others only see barriers, and to be forward looking. And the third is intellectual humility. To realize that there is always a distinct possibility that we might not be all right. In fact, we might be wrong. And hence, we should all be lifelong learners who are always seeking out alternative views and facts that can sharpen our thinking. In acquiring these three attributes, intellectual rigor, intellectual creativity and critical thinking, and intellectual humility, you will also acquire the freedom to learn to think for yourself and the freedom to be the architect of your Denison experience and your life. So to do this, I'm going to ask three things of you. They basically mirror what Professor Poole said, except for the last one, patience. I'm looking at my best friend, partner, and spouse of 30 years. I have many things. I'm not sure patience would actually be on that list. But it is a good thing if you can acquire it. So I'm going to ask three things. The first, make your academic courses the centerpiece of your Denison experience. Do the work. Show up and be engaged in classes. Find power and joy in the books you read, the papers you write, and the discussions you have in class. Enjoy, savor, the conversations with our faculty, both inside and outside the classroom. At Denison, it's not just that our classes are small. It's that everybody's expected to be engaged. Seek out and connect with faculty, especially those who will challenge you. Our faculty care deeply about our students, and they want to unlock your intellectual potential by provoking inspiring and challenging you. The academic experience of Denison is not easy, but it's purposeful and it's powerful. Our faculty will push you hard and they will expect a lot from you. They do this because we care about you and we want to see you develop your full potential. Let me be clear. We had over 12,000 applications this year for an incoming class of about 650 students. 80% of the students who applied, we weren't able to offer spots to. Every single person here tonight is capable of thriving intellectually at Denison. But you're going to have to be fully engaged, work hard, and ask for help when you need it. Here's the second. Get involved in co-curriculars, but in the right kinds of ways. Um, Denison students are doers, and much of the learning comes from the co-curricular involvement. I love our students' commitment to campus life. But don't overcommit and get overextended. Remember, the learning and fun come from doing things at a high level of quality, whether it's winning athletic games, putting on artistic performances, or improving the campus. And save time. Save time to take advantage of the intellectual and cultural life of the college. Go to lectures. Go to Vail Series concerts and academic department events. Make it a habit on Friday and Saturday night to go down to the Eisner Center and to the openings in the Bryant Art Center and Museum. As you decide how to spend your time, participate in co-curriculars you enjoy, but also save time 
to open yourself up to exploring new interests and developing new passions. One of my favorite Denison students a couple of years ago once told me that she came to Denison because she wanted to play basketball and be a psychology major, and she graduated the captain of our softball team at a creative writing major. <laughs> Almost everybody who comes to Denison develops a passion they didn't know they had when they arrived. It's one of the things I love about this place, and it speaks volumes both about the kinds of people who come here and the support they receive. So here's the third. Develop a wide set of friendships, especially with those whose life experience and views are different from your own. Friendships run deep at Denison. Typically, our students start by developing friendships with people who have similar life experiences. But that should be the starting point, not the end goal. You will get the most from your Denison experience when you seek out and form friendships with people whose life experiences and worldviews are vastly different from your own. One of Denison's great strengths is the diversity of our community. In particular, our students come to campus from every part of the United States and over 40 countries. Students have a wide range of political views, religious practices, and life experiences. This means proactively seeking out peers in residential halls, classrooms, and other campus venues who see and live in the world differently from you. The wider your network of friends, the more you'll enjoy Denison, the better the life habits you will create, and the more you'll learn from your peers. And I'll just repeat what I said to many of you on June. I'll ask two things of you, and I may ask you when I see you on the quad during the first semester if you've done it yet. The first is, during this first month, seek out the person in your residential hall whose life experiences are most different from your own and find a way to forge a friendship. Here's the second. When somebody says something in a classroom that you find deeply troubling and maybe even offensive, ask them out for coffee. Don't start by asking them about their worldviews. Start by asking them about their life history. Because once you understand somebody's life story, often their political views and intellectual perspectives make a whole lot more sense. So there's a lot of other things I'd like to say. Don't be afraid of failure. It's normal and part of the process. I've seen your admissions folders, a lot of them. For many of you, experiencing failure will be a new thing at Denison. I'm super excited for you. <laughs> Learning to fail forward is one of the most important things you'll learn at Denison. Um, there's a famous sociologist by the last name of Goffman, and he used to say that once you get over the fear of embarrassment and failure, life gets a whole lot easier. He was right. But here's what I'm going to ask of you. You're going to have some moments this first semester that are going to be fantastic. You're going to be happy. You're going to sit back and say to yourself, I never imagined college would turn out this good. And then you're going to have a lot of moments this first year that are not like that. You're going to have moments where you struggle academically. You may fail an exam or paper for the first time. You may get back a paper from some of our illustrious faculty where they've written more comments than you wrote on your paper. You may figure out that whatever sport you love, there's people here who are actually really good. And if you're involved in the arts, you're going to be surrounded by talented and creative people. That roommate that you thought was great the first couple weeks may not be so great in the middle of the semester. Whatever it is, you're going to have those moments. When those happen, don't make the mistake of looking around and thinking that everybody else is not struggling when you are. It's not true. The struggle to failure is part of the process. It's normal. It's by design. And we're here to help you learn to work your way through it. So lastly, have your minds wide open. Um, a liberal arts education is rooted in intellectual inquiry. We're places where people are expected to ask questions, challenge orthodoxy of all kinds, starting with our own. We want you to engage and play with ideas through intellectual inquiry and debate. You're living on a campus and studying with faculty, staff, and peers who have a wide range of views. That's a strength. And have your mind wide open to it. I'm super excited about the debate we're going to do on Saturday morning with our new student, with your, with your class. It's the first time we've tried something like this. And I think it speaks volumes about what it means to be in a liberal arts education. Develop the habit of being open to new ideas, even when they challenge everything you thought was true. Being intellectually uncomfortable is an important part of both the liberal arts education and the Denison experience. 
it's also part of being human. And lastly, lastly, I want to I want to repeat what something that Professor Poole said. Create the Denison experience you want for yourself. Um, there's a Denison alumnus by the name of Chris Celeste, and he has a new book out, actually just out over the last couple weeks, um, called Leaders Lead Themselves First. And in the book, he writes that early in his life, he realized he was making the mistake of making decisions by default, not by design, and more often than not, fueled by fear. His life got better, he writes, when he decided to become authentic. And Chris talks about learning the practice of just being me. So I'll close with two asks. Um, the first is over these next few days and during orientation, but also over the entire first semester and year, have each other's back. Be there for each other, especially during AUGO and the first semester. Be friendly to all of your classmates, to everybody in your residential hall. It's a Denison thing. If you're extroverted like me, a lot of this comes easy. If you're introverted, like most human beings, it's a little bit harder. So make it your responsibility to pay attention to what's happening in your residential halls, your classrooms, your teams, your dining halls, and other spaces around campus. Make sure that everybody feels a sense of inclusion and belonging. If somebody's connecting less with others, make it your responsibility to include them. If somebody's struggling to keep up, make it your responsibility to help them. Those are Denison values. They've been our values for a long time. We're proud of them, and we're excited to pass them on to your class. We are a community that cares about each other, that's interested in each other, and where everybody wants to see each other succeed. And my second and last ask, when you see me around campus and I stop and say hello and ask how things are going, it's not a rhetorical question. Stop. Um, tell me how things are going. I'm interested in getting to know you. I'm interested in being part of your Denison experience. Um, I'm thrilled for the journey that lies in front of you, and I want to help to make it a good one. So welcome to Denison. Welcome to college. Can we give the class of 2026 one more round of applause? So every college has its own song. It's alma mater, and Denison's no different. Um, so to help you learn the melody to the song To Denison, um, we're gonna, it's going to first be sung to us by members of our August orientation staff. After hearing the verse once, we're going to ask all of our students to rise and sing it a second time. Um, the words are actually printed on the back of your program. And then following the singing of the alma mater, we're going to ask that the audience be seated while members of the platform party and the faculty recess. Um, at 8 o'clock sharp, our class of 2026 is going to need to meet with their August orientation leaders right here on the Reese Shackelford Common um, to get ready for a busy next couple days. Um, and at that point, we're going to ask parents and family members to say goodbye to your students, um, and we wish you safe travels on your return home. And now my remarks actually say, stand away from the microphone when you start to sing. So I'm going to do that. To Denison we raise our song, fair college on the hill. The name that sets our souls on fire and makes our senses thrill. To Denison, my Denison, in praise our voices swell. The scenes of happy college days, the home we love so well. To Denison we raise our song, fair college on the hill, the name that sets our soul. 